guys, it's Amber from Amber Eats Books, and I'm here today to bring you my December wrap-up. Now, December was a very busy month for me, but I was still able to get through quite a good number of books. I think probably because many of them were like light little Christmas reads, um, but I was still really ecstatic that I was able to accomplish anything during the month of December, let alone the amount of books that I was able to get through. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. As always, I'm gonna start with my lowest ranked book and work my way up to my highest. This month, my lowest ranked book was an audiobook called The Christmas Pearl, written by Dorothea Benton Frank. This was the story of a woman who is now in her 90s. She's kind of reminiscing about how Christmas used to be back in her childhood. It wasn't quite so commercial and, and crazy like it is now. It was more about homemade gifts and just the spending of time together and the making of food. Um, and now that she's spending Christmas with her family, everyone seems to be whiny and selfish and just not very nice. Her whole family is just not very nice. And this is kind of the story of how she she goes about trying to change all that, though it's not really her that's trying to do that. Um, but I don't want to give too much away in case you do want to read it, but I just did not enjoy it. There was this element of magical realism within it that did not work for me. And normally I am kind of a fan of magical realism, but I just did not enjoy it. Um, it was a very short audiobook, which is the reason why I finished it. If it had not been so short, I probably would have DNF'd it, but um, I just didn't really get very much out of it. I did like in the beginning the descriptions of how Christmas used to be and the descriptions of food throughout the book. Um, I thought those were really great and there were some recipes that you could try at the end of the book. Um, but just the story itself really just didn't do anything. It, it was supposed to be heartwarming, but it really just kind of irritated me, to be honest. The way these people acted were just ridiculous and insane and why she waited over 60 years to kind of fix her family is beyond me but I just enjoyed being able to listen to the narrator she did a really great job her voice was fantastic um, she had this really great southern accent that really added to the story for me so that was definitely a plus so I ended up rating this two stars. The next book that I finished this month was The Christmas Angel Project by Melody Carlson. This is about a group of friends who have recently lost one of their own. She passed away suddenly and they are trying to find a way to not only deal with their grief but kind of honor her at the same time so they come up with The Christmas Angel Project. I have to tell you Christmas books in general aren't really my usual go-to kind of pick um, during the regular months of the year, I probably wouldn't gravitate towards these types of stories. I only gravitate towards them in the month of December. I just kind of get that warm, cozy feeling. I need something light and easy to read. So these are great books to be able to pick up for that. I started the month off really strong. One of the books that you'll see in a little bit was one of my favorite Christmas books of all time. I just had a lot of fun reading it. And because I started off with that book, all the other books that came after were being compared to that one. And this one just didn't live up to the potential of that book. Um, so I was kind of sad about that. I did find little moments here and there that I enjoyed, but overall it just really didn't do anything for me. I felt that um, everything felt kind of rushed. Um, and sometimes that happens with these Christmas books. There's, they're, they're very short, so there's not a lot of time to kind of build up to things or to get into the reasons why people do certain things. Everything just kind of gets done and works out and just happens. And sometimes that works, but other times it doesn't. And this was just a case of one of those times where it really just didn't work for me. So I ended up rating this 2.5 stars. The first line in this book is... Abby Wentworth sighed with contentment as she leaned into the soft, plush sofa. The next book I read this month was also a Melody Carlson book, and that was The Christmas Joyride. I fell in love with this cover. I love this RV that's decorated for Christmas. I just thought that was so adorable. This is a story of Miranda, who is at a point in her life where she just, things have not kind of gone her way. She's running out of money. She's going to be homeless not homeless so far, she really won't have a place to live, but she just needs some time to get back on her feet. And she has made friends with her 85 year old neighbor, Joy, and Joy is about to move into a retirement home. She is at the end 
end of her living alone days and is packing up her house. She loves Christmas. She runs a blog called The Joy of Christmas and she decides that she is going to take an RV and drive across the country and give some Christmas joy to different people throughout this long, long ride. So she ends up enlisting Miranda to come with her because what else does Miranda have to do right now? Nothing. So she, Miranda comes with her and they not only help other people, but kind of change the course of events for Miranda's life. I thought the premise was super cute. I really was going into it so excited to read it. Again, this one sort of fell short the same way that the Christmas Angel Project did in that it just, things happened too fast, too easy, too quickly. There wasn't enough buildup to things. Um, I really did appreciate some of the cutesy little moments, especially when they did help other people and were able to bring some joy into their lives. I really did enjoy that. But overall, it just didn't really get to that point for me where I could say that I loved it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. And it really just wasn't fantastic compared to the other Christmas books that I read this year. So I ended up giving this one 2.75 stars. And the first line in this book is, Christmas in a box, what could be better? The next book that I read this month was another book that I don't have to show you because it was a library book and that was Tower Lord by Anthony Ryan. This was book two in the Raven Shadows series. Book one, Blood Song, was probably my favorite fantasy book, new fantasy book anyway, new series that I had started this year. So I was like, yes, I'm so excited to dive into Tower Lord because I love Blood Song so much. However, it just kind of let me down. Um, in Blood Song, we get the perspective of Valen and we get only his perspective. So it was so fun diving into it. And it was kind of like one of those books where he starts off young and he goes to this place and trains and then becomes this and there's a group of friends. Um, I'm just a sucker for those types of fantasy books. I really am. Book two, however, they completely switched and decided to change to multiple perspectives and it just lost its magic for me. It just was not the same. And the story, the story was kind of slow for me, whereas in the first book, it kind of just went really fast because I was so immersed into the, into the setting and the story. Um, so I just did not enjoy it as much. I probably will read book three. I'm just really not in a rush to do so right now. I ended up reading it three stars and I don't have the first line because I returned the book to the library. The next book I have to talk about is Christmas Stories, short stories by Lucy Maud Montgomery. And that's exactly what it is. It's just a very small collection of short stories all centered around Christmas. Um, it was cute, it was easy to read. I like some stories more than I liked other stories, which is always true with the short story collection. Um, I can't really tell you much more than that because they are very short and it would give, give it away, give any of the plot of any of the stories away. So if you like Lucy Maud Montgomery, then you would probably like this book. The first line in the first story at least is, well, I really think Santa Claus has been very good to us all, said Jean Lawrence pulling the pins out of her heavy coil of fair hair and letting it ripple over her shoulders. The next book that I picked up this month was another audiobook. I picked this one up not really knowing anything about the synopsis of the book. I just kind of went into it sort of blind. I'd heard one or two people on booktube talk about it in the last year or so and said that they enjoyed reading it anyway. So I was like, well, I'll give it a shot. So I didn't really have high expectations going in and that was The Serpent King by Jeff Zenter. So I started listening to it and it's from three different perspectives. It's a group of friends and you kind of follow each one of their lives. Their lives are all different and they they each have their own sort of problems and things happening within them. And you're just kind of going along for the ride, seeing the snapshot of when they're just about to graduate from high school. It was very interesting. Um, I wasn't expecting one of the perspectives to have a religious cult type theme to it. Um, that's all I can really say without giving too much of the book away because I really feel like going into it blind was the best way to go into it. It just sort of allowed me to not have any preconceived notions and to just be able to enjoy the story. And I actually ended up getting a lot out of it. 
I will say there was one character in particular and that was Dill. He was my favorite perspective. I thought the writing, especially in his chapters, were quite was quite beautiful. And there was just observations and things that were made in those chapters that really made me pause and think and just really set my brain on fire, you know? So I really, really did enjoy it. There were some of those little kind of like tropey moments because this is a YA book. Um, but I think compared to other YA books, this one was definitely one that stood above others. So I ended up reading this one four stars. I do not have the first line because it is an audiobook. The next book I want to talk about is A Redbird Christmas by Fanny Flagg. This was probably one of my favorite Christmas books I read this month. It centers around this one man who has been diagnosed with a condition and he is told he doesn't have very much longer to live and if he stays in Chicago where it's brutally cold because it's winter right now, he will not survive, his lungs will not survive. So he decides to move down south and just happens upon this small town. I think all of the things in this book um, that I kind of griped about in the other two Christmas stories really worked in this book. Things did work out a little too well sometimes, but not well enough. Like there was a little bit of drama, not just, oh, this should happen, and then it did. Um, there was a little bit of drama. There was different perspectives. I certainly loved all of the characters that lived in this town. And when I say characters, I mean they were just funny. They were so funny and so varied. I just loved it. And it just gave me all those warm, cozy, Christmassy feels. So if you're looking for a good Christmas read, this is one that I will definitely recommend. The first line in this book is, it was only November 6th, but Chicago had just been hit with its second big blizzard of the season. And Mr. Oswald T. Campbell guessed he had stepped in every ice cold, ankle deep puddle of dirty white slush it was possible to step in, trying to get to his appointment. And the next Christmas book that I have to talk about is one that I use to compare all my other Christmas books, and that is Winter Street by Ellen Hildebrand. This is book one in a series. There are four books in this series out, and it was very hard for me not to just run to my local library or go onto Amazon and order the next books in the series because I love this one so much, I wanted to just devour them all. But I said, no, why don't you save it till next year because you will have something really to look forward to. So that is what I'm going to do. This follows the story of the Quinn family. They have so many members of the family that each have their own individual problems and they're now all coming together at Christmas time. It was just a lot of fun to read. I flew through this book and I cannot wait to get my hands on book two because there was a little bit of like a cliffhanger type ending and I just wanna know what happens, but I'll be patient and wait. I ended up reading this book four stars. The first line in this book is, he thinks nothing of walking into room 10 without knocking. The next book that I have to talk about is one that I finished towards the end of the month and I really enjoyed it. And that is Alice I Have Been by Melanie Benjamin. This is a fictionalized story about the real Alice in Wonderland or at least who the character was based on. I had no idea of the background of that, of her story, of the people surrounding her story. So when I went into this book, I was, at first a little shocked, I was like, hmm, this is the direction this book is taking. Um, so I paused reading it and I actually looked up the true facts and come to find out they were really what she was talking about. Of course, she went into a little bit more details and she did change a couple of things which she goes into detail about in the author's notes. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed the story. I thought the writing was fantastic um, and it kind of jumped time frame. So you see this person as a girl, as a sort of like a young adult and then older in her life. And you just kind of see the range of what could have been, what it could have been like being the person that Alice in Wonderland was based on. And I just, I loved it. So if you are an Alice in Wonderland fan, I would definitely recommend picking this up because it just adds another layer to all of that. And it really shocked me some of the things that I learned about because I was like oh this couldn't have really happened and then when I went and read the real true facts I was like oh yes that is definitely something that they think happened so if you don't know the true story behind Alice in Wonderland definitely definitely go out and pick this up I rated this four stars and the first line in this book is off with their legs 
the last book that I read this year was such a fun read and that was Letters from Father Christmas by J.R.R. Tolkien. I absolutely adored this book. This is a collection of all the letters that he wrote to his children as Father Christmas. They were fun and imaginative and you could just feel the love sort of like oozing through the paper um, as you read these. They got they started off very short and got more and more elaborate as the time went on. I love the little illustrations that started to happen. I just, I fell in love with this. And this is something that I will keep on hand and read again and again and again. I will read you the first letter because it is a very short one. Christmas House, North Pole, 22nd of December, 1920. Look at these illustrations. So cute. Dear John, I heard you ask Daddy what I was like and where I lived. I have drawn me and my house for you. Take care of the picture. I am just off now for Oxford with my bundle of toys. Some for you. Hope I shall arrive in time. The snow is very thick at the North Pole tonight. Your loving Father Christmas. I'll give you more of a close-up on that. So if you are in the mood for a very cozy, wonderful Christmas read, this is definitely the book to pick up. So those were all of the books that I was able to get to in the month of December. Like I said, it was still a good number of books for how busy the month was for me. I even ended up starting Little Women right at the end of December, though I didn't finish it till the first day of January. So I didn't count that in my December reads, but I thought it was a very good accomplishment for the month. Anyway, what did you guys read this month? Did you read any Christmas books that you absolutely fell in love with? Because I'm on the hunt for next year's Christmas books already. I would like to keep a wish list of them. So if you found any that you really, really enjoyed, please leave them down in the comments below and I would love to add them to my list. I hope you guys had a great December and I hope you have a great January. Happy reading.